Yeah, so you got to use those topo maps for something, and wrapping hard drives up is a good use. Um, <laughs> my name's Laren Dalby, uh, former president of NISJIC. I don't know if you guys are familiar with NISJIC. Most of them won't be familiar with you, so it's okay. Um, and that's a bad thing, actually. And uh, one of the reasons I'm here, I am here on behalf of the state of Arkansas, but anything that I say is my own opinion. So there's my disclaimer. Um, let's see if we can get this thing. I'm not a nerd. I'm a whiteboard guy. If you go to Twitter and do a search on the hashtag whiteboard, most of them are mine. See, Glenn's not here. If Glenn was here, he could fix this for me. Real quick, abbreviations for states. <laughs> AR is Arkansas. That's where I'm from. I feel your pain on rule. 54,000 square miles. We were 2.5 million population. I'm not sure. Tim can tell us later. Later. Uh, yeah, not, not, not immediately later, but later, later. Um, about a million of those are right, you know, within 100 square miles, so we're, we're pretty rural. Um, and I like it that way. We can shoot guns anywhere we want. Um, <laughs> so I had 10 slides to start with, now I'm up to 25, because throughout the day I've just started adding crap. Um, this, is, this is really why I'm here. Um, I was sent on a mission, and, and this is kind of the mission. Um, State of Arkansas is interested in, in helping update OpenStreetMap, but we, we don't want to muck it up, right? I mean, y'all guys got a good thing going. And so, the, you know, the ARC tool came out, and we were looking at that, and I said, hey, cool, I could just, like, boom, upload all our stuff. And then I was like, ew, I don't know if that's a good idea. So I want to work with whoever in this room um, to figure out what, what the right process is, how it might, how it might uh, happen, what the workflows are, and, and then get our data used and I'll talk a bit about that. So now into the presentation, open the data. Um, real quick about our office established in 2003, we coordinate with all levels of government. Uh, it's a legislative mandate. We also coordinate with the private sector. That's a bit unique. You can tell I've said this like 10,000 times. Uh, this is a standard slide here. Our whole goal is to create once and use a bunch. Our data is all open. Um, open is in like really open, like no license, zero license, do whatever you want, download it, sell it, we don't care, just come get it. Um, so it's like open, open, really open, um, I guess, if, if there's such a thing. We've got, we've got a platform or a clearinghouse or distribution system, there's 200 data sets in it. We did get a trademark on it, or actually a service mark, because there's a geo store with an E, we can't spell it Arkansas, it's uh, G-O-S-T-O-R. Um, but there's one with an E where they actually sell the data. It's our data, but they sell it. It's kind of funny. Um, you, you can use either one. We don't care. Um, but, but this one will have more current information. The other one doesn't. We do all the distribution mechanisms you can think of. I'm not going to spend any time on this. You all know that. Access globally. A bunch of unique visitors around the world. This freaks out our legislative committees because they want to know why all that brown's over there. I think it's a good thing. Um, some of the data that is uh, published, address points, um, we have 16 counties that have published those, and the other seven, um, whatever the difference in 75 and 16 is, the rest of them haven't published because they're not done. Um, they do plan to publish. Uh, 74, actually there's a press release that's going to be coming out on Tuesday. We're doing a big hoop de moi and um, TV cameras and all that good stuff because our 75th county uh, we'll be publishing its road center line file uh, for open access. And the only reason it took them so long is we had to name the roads. They didn't have road names. Um, they were posts, they were rural route. Uh, so that's been interesting. Uh, 28 counties of parcel polygons with full attribution uh, following one of those bureaucratic standards. Um, yeah, FTDC, that was the one. So, it's pretty interesting. Uh, 273 data sets, various forms, even a couple of private companies have loaded data that they want to make uh, no fee access to, and they've put that data into our clearinghouse, and we're glad to have it. It is only for Arkansas, so if you're in Oklahoma, don't send me an email saying, where's my data? And I get those pretty regular. <laughs> so here's some of the contributed data sources. We also get high-res data, uh, orthos in particular, from all kinds of different places, showing some of the counties as well as uh, the Corps of Engineers. This is data just from 2010. Um, so that's fairly significant, um, as well as the other. My favorite is the FTP Ortho Index footprint, which you can download, click on a single point, and it'll list all the links for any information you want for any single 
uh, place. That was a fun day set. Stats, they're really kind of irrelevant um, uh, as to what's on our clearinghouse. And I'll tell you, just remember the ubiquitous slide here, and I'll tell you why on that slide. So, Crisis Mapper some time ago tweeted out, um, sometimes the questions are complicated and the answers are simple, and I <laughs> completely agree. Um, particularly when it comes to this question here, which is why government data or government should provide open data. And so here are some of the answers that we, you've all heard. It's the right thing to do. Uh, it's been paid for with tax day or dollars already, and this is my answer. It's like, why, why well, we got to talk about this again? Um, so here uh, is what I think about when I'm talking to my fellow state coordinators and counties and cities and you know whoever it is, and they say, why do y'all publish all your data open? access and it's like god I don't want to it's like talking religion or politics you just don't want to talk about that because um, there's a whole lot of uh, emotions built into the conversation so here's why we publish uh, economic developments our number one thing uh, Mitsubishi just invested hundred million dollars and they don't invest a hundred million dollars in the state of Arkansas without looking at a bunch of maps and we know that they looked at maps because we can pull we could, if we wanted to, pull their email addresses and see that they might have looked at some maps. Um, our, our legislators and our governor, who is actually third over from your left, uh, in the bottom picture there, they believe in this as well. This is a strategic economic advantage for us to publish our data. And it doesn't take very many $100 million projects to, to fund statewide road center lines or orthos or or uh, parcels or addresses or whatever it is. Unfortunately, we haven't quite got them to make that tie yet. Um, that's one of our shortcomings is a, is a steady revenue stream, but we're working on it. The other is pictures worth a thousand words, right? Uh, we want the best uh, foot, 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 foot put forward uh, for the state of Arkansas, and so we publish our orthos out. We uh, physically send those on hard drives to Bing, Google, Microsoft, uh, Yahoo, whoever will take them. Um, and there are a number of online web mapping applications. The next reason is disaster. Somebody mentioned it earlier. Um, it's the big one. So the reason this is significant to us, and I think I shared this with uh, Kate and Andrew the first time I visited 41, 41, when we were putting our data in geocommons, um, it's the New Madrid Fault. And the reason that's significant to Arkansas is like every disaster that happens in our state, I don't know if y'all heard of the tornado that cut through. It's like 252 miles long across the whole state. It was single track, big one. Those are all like planning sessions for this, which is like going to be bad, bad. And the reason it's bad, bad is because uh, we know that all federal resources are immediately going to go to St. Louis and Memphis, and we're going to be hung. Um, because this is all delta here on the eastern side of Arkansas. It's relatively low population. There's a lot of bridges. It's sandy soil and it's going to roll through there like jello and it's going to be nasty. Um, but we're going to have to take care of ourselves. The other part is is that I may be over there in the delta as well as all of our GIS geeks at some conference and you know good folks like yourselves are going to be trying to help us and um, we have a bunch of the data already. I want you guys to have that so you can help us and you don't have to go recreate it. This is pretty significant from Wiki. Um, I, I won't read it all to you, but I gotta read this, this last part. The screams of the affrightened inhabitants running to and fro, not knowing where to go or what to do. The cries of the fowls and beasts of every species, the crackling of trees falling. The roaring of the Mississippi, the current, of which was retrograde for a few minutes, owing as it as is supposed to an eruption in its bed formed a scene truly horrible. That was from 1811. Uh, somebody that lived through the last time uh, the big one occurred. So, you know, it's going to be bad. Um, so, this is the file that I want to talk about for a minute. This is the Arkansas Road Center Line file. I said it'd take two years to do it. It took us eight. I was a little off. Um, but the reason this file is significant is because the counties created this file. It's created and maintained, so we put these mechanisms in to maintain the files. And the counties create the file, they roll it up to the state, we integrate it into a publication um, file that the, we, we then push out. You can think of us as, a, as the middleman, which isn't necessarily a good place to be, but that's what we are. These counties, yes, some of them do not have bandwidth. Um, 
and so they don't want to distribute the data out or have the means to distribute the data out, but they want it to get out. So they give it to us, we push it out. So we finish and we think the mission's accomplished, but not really because I think the work really continues on and this is where I want to kind of focus a minute or two. So the next reason of publishing is for ubiquitous use and um, we feel like we touch 1% of N, whatever N is. Um, and, and that's really, really generous because we, our stats don't support that that many people are coming to Geostore. Our desire is to have the road center lines, the parcels, the addresses, whatever it is, ubiquitously used. Uh, and that was, a, that was a term Mike Byrne uh, coined some, some years ago, ubiquitous use of data. And that will help us for a number of different reasons. So we publish data to all these different places. Um, we, we either publish or want to publish uh, data to all these different places. Um, but what we really don't have a, a solid handle on is, is a feedback loop or flagging, flagging mechanism. I'm not talking about data synchronization because I think that's the wrong thing really. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. but For example, if something happened in OpenStreetMap, it would be really cool if some flag, flagging system told me that so I could share that with the locals and they could investigate, vice versa, for example. Um, and I think knowing about those changes would ultimately, ultimately make for better data for all of us. So, so that's kind of where my focus is. And so, you know, why publish? Well, you get better data. And this is like my dream. This is like maybe my kids will pull this off one day. But you've got all of these different sources, and we're in the bottom right. We say we're the authoritative source, and there's like, you know, USGS says they're authoritative. Census says they're authoritative. I don't know. Everybody says they're authoritative. So whoever you are, you can be authoritative, and that's fine. But it would be nice if we told each other about changes. That would be really interesting if we had a system by which um, we were exposing changes to each other um, in, in a flagging system so that we could at least decide whether we want to incorporate those things. So, to that end, um, these are the questions. That's the summary, in case you fell asleep. It's right there at the top. These are my questions. Um, how do we load good data? And, and I don't mean any disrespect to OSM. I don't, somebody can probably pull up and see how many editors there are in Arkansas. I'm going to guess less than five, probably like one. Um, so how do we load good data in, for the state of Arkansas in appropriately, not technically, but appropriately, without alienating current contributors or the community? That's kind of my first question. And then two, is anyone interested in figuring out with us how to publish or flag changes? So maybe OSM said, just publish changes into OSM, and that would be cool. But for us, we just want you to flag changes as a citizen or whoever it is, is making them. And why is that significant to us? Well, um, we could go build another platform or system that would be used for crowdsourcing to, for citizens to input where a new road is. We could do that. I think that's kind of silly. What would make more sense is if we used the stack that's already built in OpenStreetMap to, uh, to do that. But but for us, we got to know about those flag changes or have a way to pull those out, and you know, automate it in an email or some type of GRSS feed would be really cool. So th those are our questions. So I'm all the way back to the beginning. This is what we want to do. Um, hopefully, some of you guys have answers, thoughts, or concerns, or whatever it is. But that's, that's why I'm here this weekend, is, is to see if this is feasible. Um, and if it's not, you know, what are the obstacles so maybe we can, we can overcome those. So with that, <laughs> it, it's usually like, you know, let me help you or you help me. And, and really, I see this as a cyclic thing, right? It's help you, help me, help you, help me, help you, help me kind of thing. And so, you know, it's that whole community, you know, love, peace, and harmony type deal. And, and that's where I'm at. So... This is my peace offering, and I'm open to questions or thoughts or concerns. And yes, we do publish addresses. No, we don't have a problem with it. So I'll just answer that one right away. <laughs> There's no security concerns, privacy concerns. We do it. Okay, no questions. Great. Oh, crap.
Yes. <laughs> uh, will it be a three-way sync? In other words, the counties will still have their own individual database, and as they change roads at the county level, those tech database will be changed also? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, that's kind of what I'm here to try to figure out. I don't think it's a synchronization at all. Um, I think sync is the wrong word. Because a synchronization implies there's no human human interaction. It's just you know synchronizing databases across the system. We've done some of that, and and that works okay. Um, but politically, one of the things that I do in my job is is I I'm like the middleman between the governor or an executive and the technical nerd, right? Technically, we could sync. Politically, counties would freak, right? Because it's their data. They don't want. But what they do want to know about is changes. So I'm really interested, I'll call it flagging, but there's probably a better word. I'd be interested in flagging of changes. Yes, it should flag, everybody should get a flag. Something is different between my data set and X. I think. But I'm open to suggestions. Yes. Yes, sir. I, mean, I, think yeah. it's, I think it's really interesting that um, obviously with the amount of data you're putting out there, it's something that's going to affect anybody here, you know, Tiger being the first pass at where in the U.S., we import all Tiger, which means also in the U.S. was mapped without anybody actively, a human, no human being involved in that necessarily. And so you could, you could theory, theoretically import all of Arkansas in the past, but have no more than the five mappers in all of Arkansas. So also the onus is on you personally to have to keep pushing that in, hoping you can then, which isn't scalable. So how do you, right? So how do you, how do you do both, where you put in good quality data, but at the same time build a community? In a, in a, in a um, we talked about earlier with you know it's an already it already looks mapped as as Steve pointed out. Once it looks mapped, well I don't have to fix it when it looks blank. Uh, now I'm encouraged to go and do it at least for some type of some type of mapper. Um, and so there's a really interesting balance there to for for you to even kind of instigate that to get people locally to start editing Arkansas to then know let the counties know it's changed. But which happens first? Yeah. So I've been thinking about that quite a bit. It's the chicken or the egg um, question. Here, here's where we're at. Um, you know, several people approach me about OpenStreetMap, and, and their comment is, "Man, that site blows." And I'm, you know, my immediate response is, "We'll fix it." That's kind of what the whole premise is. Um, but they recognize that we already have this statewide program, so they're saying, "Why do I pour resources into fixing it?" Um, what What I would say is, is that if we had the beginnings of, if we imported the Arkansas Road Centerline file in, then our office would start working with counties and making them aware, hey, if a citizen sees a change or wants to report an error, because we do have errors, we know we have errors, we need to make our, our data better, um, then, then have them use OpenStreetMap. So we would, we would promote that as the report change, if you will. That's, that's how we would utilize it. Because we have the same thing. I mean, I feel for you back there. I know all my citizens think I run Google and Bing as well. We get phone call after phone call about my house is on the wrong side of the road. We can't, we have no way to change what they do, right? We can report it and in two weeks or 20 years it'll get fixed. But through OSM and now with the partnership with MapQuest and others, we do, we, we have a mechanism by which the citizen can take control and they can do it. So that's kind of our thinking. I don't know if that's right, but that's, that's my spin. So, so you, you think, so your position would be you load it all in and you, Arkansas would actually point to a citizen and they call it in saying, hey, can you go to this site, possibly get up online um, and fix it, and it'll be available there, it'll show up from MapQuest in 15 minutes, and then, you know, and then the county will eventually incorporate it. Right, so then, the, so, so then it would roll back to the county from OSM. Right. That's right. kind of my thought process. I mean, I think it's fascinating to have a state saying, here's the place to go essentially report it, which means it'll look right there. It's also the way to report it. Because other problems, yeah, any other, most of traditional historic feedback mechanisms, you fill out a form, and that form went into a, bl a blind bucket. And yeah, we, we, we don't do forms with lawyers. Right. We, <laughs> we don't do that crap. It's time consuming and inefficient, so. There's a couple of issues, though, with what you're talking about, because you're talking about the interaction between public and private. And like realistically, and I imagine Arkansas is pretty similar to my experience because people aren't going to call up and I'm because I did try to direct people to things like OpenStreetMap and NavTech and Teleatlas to report discrepancies. They don't expect they expect us to put it in. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, my, my entire point is even though Google Maps or MapQuest is a private company, as a public concern, whether it's from economic development because somebody wants to get Dance Center South on the map so people can find it when they want to take their kids and get dancing lessons, or, or any other concern, it's in my benefit to update that data that goes into those, those private for-profit sites because, you know, I benefit from people coming into my county to take their dancing lessons. So the, the question is how do you, now you're kind of throwing um, almost a third entity into the equation because now it's not only public and private, it's also crowdsourced. And it's going to be an interaction between all three of those. So how do you manage the content between all three? And not only that, but how do you, how do you uh, decide which is the best data, which is the most recent, and which is the most accurate? So I got some thoughts on that. Um, again, just strictly off the whiteboard, but um, so the the import of the data would be a one time a one time deal. Crap, that sign didn't like what I was going to say. <laughs> I haven't even said it yet. So the import of the data would be one time, and then after that, all you've done is enabled a mechanism by which citizens can report error, open street map, or they could call the 911 agency or they would call our state office. If, I, if they call our state office, or in my mind, a possible scenario, a county office, they would say, modify it in open street map. As those edits, whether they were reported by a citizen in the state or any of you, because you were driving through the state, it would be irrelevant, because we'd still be getting the flags, right? And they're just flags, I think that's important, because you're accounting, so I know how you feel, because um, I work with 75 of them and I agree with you you want control of your data because you need to verify it for obvious reasons that's why I'm saying flagging so all you're going to do is get a report these roads have been modified in OpenStreetMap do you accept them yes or no so yes there are three and I would argue there's like 15 I mean if I could get Google and Bing and everybody else playing this game then we'd really have something I mean you know then we would like have a good road data set. Because Google can subscribe to the same cha RTRSS change set that, uh, that Arkansas would subscribe to, right? And then they probably want to go and drive their own cars, do their own verification. And that's going to trust the same. Well, yeah, and I think Google uses, I always get confused, but everybody's using either Healthy Atlas or NAVTEC at this point. Google uses their own, actually. Oh, that's right. They, that's they, they, they that's switched. Right. <laughs> yeah. They, they so right now, so, so to be fair, just so I don't set the expectation too high, we know we have problems with our state road, our statewide road turn on file. For example, um, it was built for geocodability, right? We just want to locate. So it, it's no good for routing right now. It's also um, not very good for cartographic purposes. We, we've got some conflation tools that we're starting to play with to see if we can get those functional class codes on to make the cartography good. Um, but there's some limitations. But what we're suggesting is, is like, here's our first crack. Now let's all make it better, and, and that's where we're really at. And so, yeah, that's 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 the downer. Yes, sir. Maybe, maybe mine's a question for the, the panel. Although I think they have some thoughts already. Um, we're seeing city, county, regional, state governments are all excited about OSM. We get queries to the mailing list, the OSM mailing list. Most recent one I remember is from somebody in the state of Utah. How do I get my data into OSM? And we don't know how to answer that question. Is there a. Um, was that from Bert Granberg? I don't recall. Yeah, it probably was. Go um, ahead, sorry. Is there any sort of like peer to peer networking among the GIS departments at, at local governments? That it, you know, I'm looking at. You've done a lot of work on this. A lot of people can learn a lot of things from, from what you've worked on. So. That's NISGIC, that's the organization you're not aware of. Um, it's NSGIC, and that's the state coordinator, so that's at a state level. And we hold two meetings a year. Um, it's all plenary, so we're all in one room. We're swapping more stories. We're trying to figure out how to solve things. We're not the only state to have this good information. You know, Utah does as well, Tennessee. There's a, there's a host of them. And a, and a host of those also have very open data sharing policies like we do. And so that's why you, you got the query yes is the answer to your question. We're doing peer-to-peer -peer 
sharing of information. OSM is very new to us, right? I mean, I know that you guys aren't new. You've been doing this a long time. But to us, you popped on our radar. And you've been on my radar for about a year. I just didn't have much to offer. Now I think I do. I want to figure out how to make it work. Kate, have you done points of interest? Did you upload points of interest in, like hospitals? or? I mean, so, you know, we've also no, got all these I points of interest. Do what? I haven't done anything for Arkansas. Thanks. So Appreciate you, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your own. Well, since I'm here, you should do that. No, I mean, we also have all these points of interest, right? I mean, hospitals, schools, pick something. And, but what I don't want to do is I don't want to just... Or maybe you guys are saying you're making too big a deal out of this, but I kind of feel like it's the communities, and I don't want to just go throw all our crap in there and alienate, you know, the community. I, I want you guys to say, yeah, that's okay. Throw all your crap in here, and we'll figure it out. Uh, whatever the solution is, I don't know. Go ahead. And then. I want to know, do you envision the two data sets, the local, the state, or the local centerline models and OSM converging? Nope. Diverging? Or staying a constant distance apart? They're, they're, I think you're always going to have a part. I mean, the, the things like parking lots, which the locals may or may not care about, they're out of system. The state sometimes don't map out of system. Forest roads, things like that, sometimes are outside of your purview. Um, and that's what would make it hard, is if when, you're, when you keep a separate base and there's not a convergence, there's always that, it doesn't ever get much easier. Yeah, and, and that's, and I agree, but I have the same problem because, you know, Geostore's up there in the top left, and I am basically writing to any one of those that will take our data. Now, Geocommons don't have to do anything, I just push it in. ESRI's got a template, you know, they want you to write into their template so you can be in their community base map. Well, I know that that doesn't set well with everybody, but there's some benefit to me for that in building iPhone applications um, because they're doing some tiling and some hosting for me. Um, you know, Google had their own set of kind of things. So no, I don't think that it's going to become one. Now maybe, maybe when Steve's full vision is realized and it's OSM or nothing, then we can say, yeah, they're all one thing. And I'm with you on that. I, I, su I support you. <laughs> I'll go down with you on that, but but we're not there yet. And so I've got to reach in that 99%, right? I mean, what drives me nuts, going back to the other gentleman's question about our other coordinators, and this is where I get, you know, like burned at the stake for heresy, but I don't care if you go to Geostore, my state clearinghouse. I don't care if you get the data from there. I just want you to get the data. That's that's my point. And, and you're... You shouldn't have to go to Geostore. You ought to go wherever you go to get the right answer. That's that's kind of where we're coming from. But that's a lot of resources to have to manage, keeping all that flow. Yes. Um, well, I was just going to be sort of the, the kick in the pants that says, and people can disagree or agree, but just do it. Just import it. I mean, Dave Hansen went and imported all of Tiger data, and. Yeah, there's always the chicken and egg thing of, oh, well, it looks mapped because it's there, but then your friends go and look at OpenStreetMap and they're like, wow, this is crap, right? If your stuff is better, start with that and see if, see if it goes. I say do it, man. Like right now? Can I? <laughs> <laughs> I got to go read a tutorial or something. No, so this goes back to one of the comments that was made earlier. The way I think the whole citizenary thing, whatever that word is, the way that flies is if you make the tools easier, right? So if I can just edit online, boom, 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 this is wrong, here's, they do markup, whatever it is, then I think that really flies. I can't tell you how bad it pisses people off when their road name is wrong. I mean, that's like, people in Arkansas died over that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm not kidding. It's not funny. They died, okay? They want the right road name. Other questions? So... Um, in previous conferences I've been to that talk about OpenStreetMap, I've heard from lots of states, and in particular Minnesota, because that's where I live, they all say the same thing. They want to import OSM and then take it back. And so I think... Um, they want to do what? They, they want to import their data into OSM and basically do what you want to do. Um, so maybe, I, I think... Uh, somebody else touched on this, but uh, it sounds like there's a lot of states that are interested in doing this. I wouldn't say a lot. I'd say some. Um, I've heard from a lot. Oh, really? But 
Yeah, okay, so I guess there are 50, so... <laughs> <laughs> There's like 10 or 15 that would yeah, be interested in doing okay, something like this. Some. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but also the USGS is interested in doing this. Um, They're interested in a little different flavor, yeah. So it, it sounds like what Hurricane said, you should just do it and see what happens. And if it's maybe a communication problem, then that's something that we can build within the communi community as well. It's maybe one of the lightning talks that I thought I'd propose because it seems like everybody's like, yeah, let's do it, but they don't have the answers how or like the proverbial kick in the butt. Just do it. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, a are, I'm a bureaucrat. I don't want to piss anybody off, right? So, there's always but, that point. I mean, talk to Steve Coast about it. It, yeah, well, and I'm notorious. You can ask anybody from the Ninja crowd. I'm notorious for pissing people off, but I really don't want to, you know, upset you guys since we're all just kind of getting to know each other. This is the first date and all. I don't want to upset you. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So we'll just go do it, right? Can we use the arc tools, or do we need to use something else? Those arc tools scare y'all because I kind of saw some people like getting a little like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to ask it out loud. Do the arc tools scare you or can I use the arc tools to upload it? They're, they're early. Okay, that's fair. That's a fair answer. Okay, I'll, I'll go old school. I'll call somebody. I don't think it makes a difference which tools you use. It has to do with you know, whether you're just plopping. I mean, that's the real issue isn't the tool set. Okay. The real issue is when people talk about uploading data into OSM, the problem is that they usually mean that literally by, I'm just going to take this data set, upload it into OSM, as if OSM is designed for aggregate databases to be hey. and not be What will happen with the existing Tiger data? You have roads overlaid and... Right, that's the problem. Not the so the roads are all going to overlay on top of Tiger? No, yeah, oh, come on now, really? No, no, or, or, or well, you link them. So you have to fix them. Like, like in, right. in D.C., we're very cognizant, which is a very, very small, not state, right? But it's very small. <laughs> region, right? that, that, You're a state. Yeah. You're in Nizhik. <laughs> uh, uh, but it, it, as Sarah says, there's a lot of consideration around. I mean, yeah, you just do it, but it does take time. Right? Yes. You have to go and you have to be a little cognizant. I mean, yes. I'm not saying that, yeah, which is an interesting thing, so is, it should just be done, right? right? I, I, I totally agree. I think it's a lot of work. Arkansas is a big state, yeah. right? And so the really curious thing is, is how do you find that community of interest? So not that I'm map, but that find community interest within Arkansas who's going to sit around and, and build the scripts and, and tackle like, okay, let's do parks today. Or let's, like in D.C., we just kind of took in. We're just focused on roads. Yeah, okay, yeah. roads, right? But probably even by, might even by, like, at least look through and say, okay, just, if it's easy, blow them all away. Yeah. But then, and then reconnect them back up to all their, all their other surrounding states or. You know, so we're going to go find some money and pay somebody. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. And you know, the thing is, like when you're, talk, when you're talking about what he said, you guys think mapping party, but and people don't want to help people like us, like that. Yeah. It, it's like if you said, no. oh, I need not. somebody to put this in. That means that means that means that means that we got to spend somebody, however many man hours you got to commit. To dropping that data in. Oh sure, but but I, I, I but I disagree. I mean, again, mapping DC. Everyone who's imported. I don't know if there's been a single person a part of the DC GIS department that's pushed upload or has any notes. Yet they spent time talking through the schemas and, and spending time and. Yeah, they're and, on our mailing list. If you have a question about the, if you say you're going to upload something, well, and, and some of them will give you a little bit of a smack down. And we do that in spare time. Now again, but, obviously yeah. we're mapping there. But I'm saying there's the some potential there to engage with people that, and I, yeah, I see math, math part really draw people who are spend some time in their spare time the night and weekend going combing through the data. To pull it. So what would be kind of interesting? Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say it's hard to find the math nerds. Like we found the DCGIS people; they didn't come find us. But you know, there's ways to do it. But you guys told me earlier I don't need to be a. Yeah, that's hard to do this. So, you know, maybe if I built, maybe maybe if I had a little help building a little tutorial that said, you know, step one, step two, step three, then I can distribute that out to a larger community of, you know, nursing homes that want something. <laughs> <laughs> Just an idea. It it could work. I'm I'm with you. Go ahead. One of the uh, complications is people have gone through and uh, corrected the interstate and U.S. highway systems. And made assigned relations to them, so those would have to be preserved and stitch your uploads. Actually, that'd be great for us because you know we don't have that. Yeah. Okay. We don't. I mean, for stuff of this scale, um, we 
we need to develop some infrastructure. We need OSM community needs to develop some tools that work on the database to make this process easier. But we also need some professionals out there with the big art, you know, the big uh, Esri suites with the Mondo conflation tools to help with, with that side of it. Um, it's just that we're not ready to process that volume regularly. I mean, I'm look, my, my workflow in my mind, and maybe I'm way off, but I'm thinking use FME to do some schema mapping because now I think they have the OSM schema in there. Do some schema mapping between ours and theirs. We're going to upload it, and then we're going to have to blow some stuff away, and we're also going to have to keep some stuff and do some connections, and voila. You know, it's only like, what, six months a year of work? Start with your least populated county. See how it goes. Well, that's everything but Pulaski, so we're good. Yeah. <laughs> Pick one. Yeah. Yes. So I got a boatload of data I'd love to share. I just want to do it the right way, and I've been told just do it. So when I do it, y'all can all kick her. <laughs> Sorry, I just I threw you under the bus. Sorry. Yeah. You are subscribed to the mailing list, right? No, I'm not on anything. So there, there's me, and you can. Yeah, first step, get on the mailing list. I mean, there's. See, I don't even know where the mailing list is. So that's why I'm here. Sorry, Larry, and I've obviously failed it. Yeah. Uh, we're going to move into a panel on OSM using government, so I think we move into that because some of these similar questions are going to come up. <laughs>